Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what was your motivation to to be a director? Uh, I always wanted to be a director uh, since I went to university and started studying film. I, I didn't know I was going to be a director, but I wanted to uh, question, should I look at the camera of the person that's asking me or it doesn't matter? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Sorry, I will. Uh, and uh, I always, you know, I was just interested in college. I just fell in love with film and I was like, I want to be a part of this. I don't know how. And I directed a little bit in college, little, you know, terrible films. And, uh, and then I did a little bit when I got out, but then when I had to find a job, uh, editing became available, more available to me, because they weren't hiring directors without experience. They don't have ads in the paper. Director, no experience needed. So editing, I just knew how to do, and so that was my in. But I always wanted to do it, and I always tried doing it, and I did some shorts and things like that, but the opportunities came in editing, and that's where I headed and always said, I want to direct, I want to direct, and eventually I hit a point where I said, okay, I, enough, I need to stop editing, or I won't be able to direct, because it takes so much focus and so much time to try to get things off the ground. So, yeah. Um, what are the challenges of directing? Because uh, with editing, you don't have to direct people. Uh, now you are the actors, yeah. so you have to direct, and this is kind of new things for you. Uh, yes, you have, to, uh, you have to rely on a lot more people, and that's where you have to learn. You have to learn that you are, to some extent, a manager, that you, at least my, my uh, approach to it is that, you know, you hire a cinematographer, and he has to understand what you want to do, but he's better, he understands light better than you. Yeah. And you hire an actor for a variety of reasons, but once they learn the character in a way they know the character more than you. They have a deeper understanding because they live in that character. And so in a strange way, it's about that. It's about clarity. Part of it is about being positive, strangely. Yeah. And other, other editors, other director friends told me that. It's just like, you know, there's so many things to be disappointed with. Mm -hmm. but they don't go right, you know, when you're shooting yeah. There's just so much stress. And you can just be like, ah. <laughs> or you can go, hey, great. You know, let's, you know, part of it is that. And then, and the unknown, there's, there's a lot less control because you're dealing with humans yeah. instead of a computer where yeah, you can, right. like every little thing you can control. So the human element can make it very difficult or very interesting and elevated. And so I think you have to approach it and go the human element, whether it's an actor or a cinematographer or a costume designer. And I, and I think you have to win their respect and you get the best out of them. And, uh, and, and just deal with changing situations all the time. Uh, because, I mean, even on big films, I think. Yeah just don't have enough time and you have to trust people. And it taught me a lot about trust actually. So it was a good life lesson about, you know, almost about relationships because you need to, yeah, you just, you, you can't do everything. You have to trust. And for, as an editor, you have to really, you have everything available to you and here, you know. <laughs> I want to know how uh, Cine Red Line helped you for your career. Was it like a point uh, where you, you got a, a a bigger image with the nomination of the Oscar. Is that this movie that uh, makes you want to to do more, to make more, and go to directing? I always wanted to direct, uh, but on a it was very useful to me because it was very well regarded, and we have we got nominated. So of course, it just opens a lot of doors, and suddenly the quality of work gets gets better. What's offered to you? whether you deserve it or not. It's just, you have, you know. Uh, it didn't necessarily make me want to direct more than I did before, but it was a wonderful, wonderful, immersive, amazing experience uh, when I was pretty young that just uh, was intense and, and beautiful. And you know, it just made me love filmmaking, actually, uh, because it was, it was such a rich, rich experience. Because you can have, Experiences are not rich, you know, difficult and make you go, I want to do something else. And that one was really, really uh, an amazing one, you know, memorable one. Doug Liman is one of the executive producers of your first film. Can you talk about your collaboration on Born Identity on his film? That was a great collaboration. It was, uh, it was really his first big film. And I think it was my first big film alone and a commercial film. 
and, and so we were both people that came from a different kind of world. And so uh, I, I had an opportunity in the film to express myself in a much freer way. Because he, he was also a director, and we, we very quickly fell into a... It just, it just worked well. Like it was an ability for, you know, I think him to play with bigger toys and to do a yeah. film that wasn't indie. And for me, it was just, a, you know, I had a lot of freedom yeah. to just create a style and a look and a feel. And he was a director that allowed that. And so uh, it was a very difficult, long process. I'm not telling you things that are not in the news, but, yeah. you know, uh, but it was an amazing experience. And, you know, it's, it's the one film the people come up to me and they're like, oh my God, still today, oh, the style of that film, they're really like, people from all walks of life, it, it seems to really, they seem to really like it. And I think partially because it had some sort of rough indie spirit to it and a different kind of language, yet it had, you know, it wasn't about disease and pain. It was, you know, it was a big blockbuster, but had a very raw, you know, uh, freedom to it that was a little bit different that we hadn't seen at that point for a while. Okay. How did you work on this script with uh, Joe Conway? We, you know, we passed it back and forth. Like I would write, send it to him, then he would write. And we just did it that way. And then eventually for a while, I was working alone on it because it took so long. And uh, yeah, it was just, uh, I don't think it was an unusual way of working, you know, but it was kind of like a back and forth. What do you think of that? What do you think of this? You know, yeah. Um, just uh, for a movie, um, for the casting, uh, Wes Bentley was your first choice? She, you movie? know, I didn't... Uh, okay, so this, I need to answer this in an interesting way, because when you cast, it's not... You, yeah. you don't... Like, choices are very strange. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I did go to somebody else, but it was in a, a, at a different time, and the script was a different script, yeah. you know, yeah. and so uh, he was my first choice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a good choice. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. Choice. And just one, I wanted to know because yesterday you said that uh, you write the script uh, before the financial crisis. Yeah. So uh, it makes long time for doing the movie. Yeah. And uh, you are rewriting the yeah. script. Or, yeah. Um, and was, was it not easy? It was very hard. Rewriting yeah. is very, very hard. It's just to try to stay fresh to just go through the script and read it and then read it again and uh, try to just not be bored. Yeah. <laughs> to just to, to try to imagine it for the first time is the hardest thing. Yeah. But it's the most important thing. Like rewriting is such a part of writing. You know, nope, I don't think anybody writes a script and goes, oh, great, it's done. Yeah. It's never done. It just has to go through a lot of scrutiny and you have to question. And, and all the way to the very end, you know, when you have your table read, when you have your, before you shoot, when you have your, all your technical crew there. Even over there, you're like, well, we can't do this. Do we need to do this? You know, it's important. Why are we spending a whole day? So it just, on every level, writing is very, very difficult. And you keep writing. Yeah. When you're shooting, you keep writing because you have to change, because, you know, sometimes for the best. Sometimes you're in a, the scene doesn't work, and you're like, well, OK. Sometimes the film changes as you're making it. Because yeah. you realize, oh, wow, this is more interesting, you know? And uh, it, it's very hard because a lot of times what happens, and I think it happened writing this script, is you have an idea, and it's so hard to get an idea financed and okay that you start questioning it. You start going, oh, why don't we make them, let's give them two heads. You know, let's make them, you know, and you, you start putting a lot of glossy stuff because you want to make it exciting to yourself and you want to make it exciting for, to people to actually get it made. And then hopefully what happens is you go through a process where you come back and you go, let's just wait a second. can't have two heads, you know, he's just a regular guy, you know, and so you hopefully are able to come back, and sometimes you do that in the editing too, you're like, okay, this is a story, and I think we really did that, we started in a place, it was a very simple story about a man in a very, in, a, in crisis, and then we piled a lot of shit on it at some point, in <laughs> the worst part, and then we just wiped it off, and eventually we were like, okay, this is the story. What do you know uh, about your inspiration for the photography? Because it's, it's really beautiful, your movie, and it reminds me of Breaking Bad, the TV show. It does, okay. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to know if it was uh, something you saw about with the house and all the, the, the colors. Yeah. Well, it's okay, so it was shot in the same place, but we were going for the opposite of Breaking Bad. And so the aesthetic, I think, is a lot different than Breaking Bad. I mean, I love Breaking Bad. 
but Breaking Bad is very colorful. You know, it's like the color palette is very, very extreme. And it's cut pretty fast, you know. And uh, so our, and our film is a lot more, uh, I think, like, it's a little bit wider and the palette is more subdued, you know, the color palette. And uh, it's, a, you know, it's not as extreme, I think. You know, we don't have, like, you know, Tuco and crazy characters. Well, you know, the rhythm, you know, it's the rhythm? Kind of, oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I, I oh, think yeah. the rhythm was a little bit like the first season because it's really about a normal gun, too. And it's really, yeah. like, uh, you know, going on and on, and the, the character evolved. I yeah. Said, yeah, a little bit like well, yeah, I think the story is similar, the plot is similar, but I think the aesthetic and the approach yeah. is different. So, and we did shoot it in New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, so, listen, I, I admire any comparison because it's a great show, and, you know, and I love it. So, you know, uh, but I'd like to think we're like the film version of, of it. You know, it's a lot, it's, a little bit more contemplative, you know, and uh, so, and, and we did, you know, the, some of the actors in our film are in Breaking Bad because when you shoot in a small community, which is what Albuquerque is, all the people that you hire for the day players are, uh, they, they, they're in all the TV shows. So we have a lot of, we actually have a lot of day actors that are great, and it was really good because there's a lot of great day actor, day players, what we call, uh, in New Mexico because they've worked on Breaking Bad for five years, I don't know, in other shows, they're very experienced and really like a good group of talent. Where sometimes you go into a community and there's no, there's no history of film and it's very hard. Yeah. And about the movie inspiration, uh, it reminds me of American Beauty. Is it something that you thought about with the Kevin Spacey's normal guy? And it's, it's more, it's not uh, hard because it yeah. really does the contrary of what he is, yeah. and he's not at the end a normal guy. Yeah. And in your movie, it's positive. He's a regular guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end, he's still someone good. Yeah. But is it something you you? I didn't about? really think about it. And there's West Bentley, you know, who played that much older. So uh, I didn't really think about American Beauty, but you know, it's definitely an American. It's got a little bit of an American kind of feel to it, I guess. You know. Uh, I forget what community they were in, but I, no, I didn't, honestly, I didn't, you know, uh, it wasn't an influence, you know, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, for me. Can you talk about your collaboration with Max Trettenfield about the important place of the music in your film? That was one, uh, the greatest collaboration of my life. Uh, okay. Max, um, Mark, sorry, <laughs> confuse me. Uh, <laughs> Mark is a good friend of mine. Okay. So we've known each other. We met in Berlin on the Thin Red Line when he was there with Hans Zimmer, who he used to work with, and I was, you know, uh, a young editor on Thin Red Line, and I came and visited, and we met, and he, you know, he's a German guy, and he said, oh, I live in Venice, California. And I was like, oh, I live in Venice. <laughs> and uh, so, and then we, be, we became friends. We've been friends for years, and uh, very close friends, one of my best friends. And so, I always knew when I was going to make a movie, and he knew that he was going to do the music to it. I didn't know he would be, become such a huge, it took me so long that he became such a huge composer. But he, he's a great guy, and he came. And when you work on movies, on big movies, you don't have the, or, or most movies, you make the film and you use temp, temp music, what we call temporary music, from other soundtracks, from other films, and you cut it together, and the composer comes on, and he has a month and a half to write the music, and it's done. You know, and either they like it or they don't like it and they fire him and they bring another composer. And I always wanted to work in a way where I just feel music is just so important to the language, you know, in cinema. It's not a novel to create mood, to create feeling. And right off the bat, Mark was part of the script writing process. He read the scripts, he gave notes, he, uh, he came to screenings all the time, and he gave me music beforehand. So we talked beforehand about themes and he wrote themes and then we didn't have a lot of music but we had a few of the themes. There's a theme with a dog yeah. and it's also when he throws the gun away okay. and he wrote that before, it may have been, be it was after we shot or during the time that we shot, it was like I had this idea, you know, this is what I'm thinking about and he gave that to me and so and what was great about it which is so rare is that we had an opportunity because we also work, we live in the same, very close to each other, <laughs> that he would send me music and we would work on music and I'd put it in the cut and I'd be like, oh, I don't know Mark. And uh, he's like, yeah, but you know, and I know it's not working, but it's, it's too long. But, you know, if, see, if you can remove things in measures of eight seconds, you know, I can make it work. 
instead of just changing and having to have twist the music, a lot of times composers have to twist the music to fit a cut because they make it shorter and longer and moves all the time. And you can hear it, I think, you know, I mean, great composers out there so they can mask it. But with Mark, we were just able to go, I'd be like, okay, here we go, take it back, back and forth. And so, and, and you know, I could just run to the studio and work with him, we can listen to stuff, and it was very, it was a much longer process. It took uh, more time, and I think that Mark has such a, you know, he's a storyteller. He's like a filmmaker in his own right, and I think maybe one day he'll make a movie. And so he, he's got a very good sense of story, of a character, and, and doing that. And so, and he's just very innovative, and everything is handcrafted. He's not, oh, I did this before, let's just throw it on. Everything is well thought out, well crafted, and, you know, he doesn't do a lot of films because... He likes to spend a lot of time be very, very engaged and involved in, in film. So I know when he worked with Ridley Scott, I mean, he'll be on for a year, which is unheard of, you know. He'll be there on location, and he'll come, and uh, so he's very engaged and very hands-on. It was a really beautiful collaboration. And I think he did an amazing soundtrack, you know, so. We talked we talked about uh, Wes Bentley before, and how did you choose the rest of the cast? Uh, I... Casting, <laughs> yes. you know, you meet them, and uh, I mean, Jason Isaacs, I, I always loved as an actor, and uh, but he usually plays very dark characters. Yes. He was on a TV show called uh, Brotherhood. I don't know if you guys seen it, where he plays a real tough, like Irish mobster, <laughs> and very, very tough. And then he's he's always played bad guys, but I always liked him. I thought he was really intense and really believable. And so, but then I saw him in another film called I, I forget what it's called, but it was about it's ten short. It was a film that consisted of 10 films, and each film is one long steady cam shot. Oh, and he did a cool. thing, and it's That's Garcia good. Marquez, it's, it's Gabriel Garcia Marquez's son. He did a film called The Women. Garcia Diego? I'm so bad at this, I should find it on my phone. But you can find out if it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, Robin, it's Robin Wright and him are in this film. Yeah. And he just plays, and I, I suggest that you see it. It's really beautiful. Yeah. It's about two old lovers that meet, but now she's pregnant with somebody else, and they're clearly still in love with each other, and he plays a much more, uh, like, uh, like a very sensitive man, and he showed a lot more dimension, and I was like, ooh, I really yeah. like this guy, and uh, <laughs> the casting agent was like, that's, oh, that's really strange, because you said you wanted a really warm kind of guy, and I was like, yeah, but I like him, we'll give him the script. Uh, very, and he said, I love the script, and I met him in a hotel room, and we just talked for three hours, and just sat and talked, It was like, great, you know, you're, you're it. You know, and, uh, and then Vanessa Shaw, through casting, you know, she, uh, and uh, Haley Bennett, who plays the girl, she was through my producer, uh, Sarah Green, because uh, she was doing something with Sissy Spacek, the actress, yeah. and, uh, and so uh, they were trying to get a movie together, and so she, you know, very late, we, we were looking for Ruby, and uh, I just wanted a girl who was, very bright and very, I wanted something happy in his life, a little, you know, sunshine in his life, a guy whose life is falling apart to have this kind of like, uh, you know, something, two people that are kind to each other, the world is unkind to him, and just for little moments, you know, there's a moment it's just like, okay, you know, I want him to do some good, he's doing so much bad, and he does a little good over there, so, yeah. That was the casting process, and then everybody else was in New Mexico, which was great. In New Mexico, we just spend three weeks just meeting, you know, interesting people. There's a man, when he sells his watch, that guy, uh, his name is Boots Sutherland. Boots Sutherland. He's a, he's a cattle auctioneer, you know. Can I get 15? Can I get 20? Can I get 30? 25? One of these guys. And uh, he, Boots, just saw Boots, huge guy, interesting. And uh, so Boots, we were like, okay, we have to have Boots. And then uh, all the other actors, we just met there. And the kids, you know, were not actors. Jason, you uh, No, no, Jason we got in Los Angeles. But the, little, the kids were local kids and never acted yeah. before or wow. did a little bit. You know, the one kid, the little kid, Teddy, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we, there was another kid, uh, his brother, Zion, mm -hmm. at the very end of the film when he goes and he knocks on the door and there's the son of the guy who got accused for the crime. That's his older brother. And so we met his older brother, and we couldn't find the younger kid. We were having problems, but the family was there, a great hippie family. And they had four kids, and the casting director said, you should meet his daughter. 
she's incredible. And she was in Breaking Bad. And uh, we met, met this girl, she was a little girl, we're like, whoa, okay, she's really, really great. <laughs> What's her name? What's her name? Zion? Kingston? They're all Jamaican names. Uh, <laughs> Oh, okay, I forget, which is horrible. But, uh, and we met the, the daughter, and she was very, very cute and amazing. But I, I thought, I wanted it to be two sons. I thought it would be more interesting. I, th I thought it would isolate the mother a little bit more. You know, that it's all these men. She's surrounded by men all the time. And so, we were like, yeah, we don't want to do it. And they were like, well, they have another little, oh, they have, they have another little brother. His name is Jamaica. <laughs> and we were like, Jamaica, okay. <laughs> And we brought Jamaica in, and he had the he had a haircut. His head was shaved over here, and it was just like he was punk rock. And he was like seven years old, and we we're like, okay, Jamaica's great, but we can't. And he, was, he was losing a tooth, too, and we we're like, oh no, you know. And so, uh, and we were like, we'll do Jamaica. And we just cut his hair, and uh, he was great. So we ended up having him, his older brother, and then we had the parents. There was a scene. It's very quick when they're playing. Baseball at the very end, and they're sitting ah, the yeah. okay. So we I had the oh uh, great the at the end. Uh, no, the, no, the other, the earlier one. Yeah, the other one. Yeah, yeah, the one of Robert. Yeah. So we had his family there. We had the whole family there. Incredible family, just really, really great. And look, you know, we, we, I remember it was one of the most emotional parts of the film. It's when the father comes home and he missed the kid's game, yeah. and the kid is like, "It's okay, daddy." Yeah. So we were sitting yeah. over there with the mother, and she was crying. Because she saw her son acting and doing that, oh. and, and I started crying. Because I, like, oh. I was like, it's real, you know? Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. it really felt amazing. It was incredible. Yeah. You, you said that you, you chose to, to pick uh, two children, uh, two, two, two yeah. boys, and uh, all the men, and I wanted to talk about the theme of father and son. Yeah. Because it's, uh, he's looking at uh, his stepfather. Uh, he's thinking about what his father did, and it's all he's surrounded by, by the, the idea of being some, someone good by, by his father or, so, or, or another one. Is it something you wanted to, to show? Yeah, I mean, we, we always talk about the, the crimes of the father, what's called about. Is it, the, you know, it's just like, really it's about him and his father and his son what his father did and how, to, how they affect each other. And then you have Jason Frank, the cop, and his son. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of like, it's a lot about fathers and sons, you know. And, uh, and you know, so, uh, yeah, that was very important for us. Is one of the themes about, you know, at one point he says to the cop, I just, you know, when he's doing bad things, he goes, I just don't, he, my son is doing bad at school. And I just don't want him to end up like me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, uh, that's what tells. It's a very big moment about, him realizing that, yes, you know, the damage that he's doing and the damage that was done to him and, you know, because of, you know, the decision his father was made was a very extreme one. So, and there's a lot of, like, you know, we talked about, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, the, the crime gene. You know, there's, there's some people that say that, like, criminal activity is in your DNA. I don't know if that's true or not, but it was very interesting just about what, how he behaves, you know, and is what his father did without saying too much. Was that in the DNA? Was it in the genes? You know, and because we have so many things we don't know about our, about our DNA. So that was kind of uh, interesting to me at all. But it's definitely an important theme for us about you know fathers and sons. Yeah. Maybe maybe to finish. Your film is is in the official competition of the David Film Festival. How do you feel about this? I'm very excited. I'm, uh, whatever happens, happens. But I'm really glad to be in this festival, and uh, you know, and uh, I, I don't know how to answer. I mean, if we win, I'll be ecstatic. I will buy the whole city a drink. Okay. Be, I, I, I say that. I, I will. Perfect. And then I'll, I'll have to get a job. But uh, I'm very excited to be here. I mean, it's been uh, really. People told me about the video. They're like, you have to go. Yes. This is where you get filmmakers are really treated incredibly well. And uh, from the, the, the first film at the, the, the big theater, it was just like, oh my god, pum, 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 pum. <laughs> music and lights. Yeah, the music and lights. It's like a show. Yeah, the, yeah it was. It was like very French in a way, and very, I felt like, uh, what's that show? Uh, game of Thrones. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> you know, I just felt very yeah, like dramatic. And, uh, game of Thrones and, uh, and, and, uh, and the, people, the people from the festival I've met have been really incredible, and it's just. Uh,
And the people in the streets are just great. They walk uh, up to you and they're like, they treat, they know your name. Yeah. They treat you like uh, you're a real celebrity. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. But I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see the rest of the films and, you know, okay. and uh, I hope I see good films here and meet. Yeah. 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 Yeah.